Welcome to JLO Artist YouTube channel. Today we'll be using oil pastels. Get out your oil pastels and some white charcoal and come and draw by this. With the, the velvet board, um, it's, it's a little expensive. So if you go out to the store, it's about uh, $50 or so a sheet. So what you're holding there is about $13 worth of, of board. Um, but you guys are worth it. So uh, oil pastels are fairly inexpensive. So um, 6 or $7, you can get a set of oil pastels. Uh, white charcoal and your kneaded eraser. And then if you have one of those little click erasers standing by like this one, it, it can help. There's not a lot of blending that you do. You're just going to layer it on top of each other. And the thing I like with the velvet board is because of the tooth on the velvet, it's going to grab your pastels and keep it in there. Pastels, because they're oil-based, they're going to last a very long time. As you're doing pastels, you got to kind of think uh, impressionism, like uh, uh, Degas, Van Gogh, that kind of thing where they lay in the color and you forget about it. You don't blend it. You don't mix it. You just lay it in on top of each other. Sometimes it'll mix, creating different colors. Other times it'll, it'll stand alone. I'm going to just uh, start with my white charcoal. And the first thing we want to do is just get a size in. We want to kind of figure out where we're going to put things. I personally think that this edge here would be should be a little tighter, that, that our picture should be kind of cropped off to the side here just a little bit. That hat's going to go way up in here. Right about in here is where her face is going to go. So you can start just very lightly with the side of your pencil and just kind of figure out where you want to put that, that head in there. Leave yourself enough space for her hands. In fact, if, if you're going to cut off some, cutting off more of her hat would be better than cutting off like her hands. And what's really important is that you get your proportions correct. So I'm just going to put in her hand here. Simple shapes. Remember to use simple shapes. finger of her other hand kind of is level with where her wrist goes into the fabric there. So that's kind of where I want it to go. And as you're, as you're putting in your proportions, kind of line things up, like where her finger lines up with the curve of her chin there. I can go straight down. That's where her finger goes. And and really, I'm not trying to detail anything here. I'm just trying to get my proportions correct. I'm just kind of blocking in where I want things to go. So I'm not I'm not trying to get the details, just where things go. Kind of trying to block them in. All that, the details and stuff I can get with the pastels. Just, just put in enough information that you can work with that. She's got a lot of stuff on that really doesn't make that much difference, whether it's in there or not. So that's probably enough for me. And we can adjust it as we go. If there's something that you've drawn in there and you don't like, try your kneaded eraser on there. It should take it out. 
or at least most of it. We're going to be covering most of this surface anyway, at least a little bit. Now, there's a couple of different things you can do. I am going to, um, I'm going to start with kind of a neutral. This is that kind of fleshy tone. It's kind of a pale, pale pink or pale orange, kind of a salmon-y color. It's going to look very light on this. I don't want to use white because white ends up being kind of chalky. And I'm just going to start out with all my light areas, starting with her forehead, working my way down. There's the part of her hair. And I'm just, I'm very, very lightly. Um, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it or anything. These are kind of like crayons if you think about them. Just lightly. I'm going to do all the lightest areas. And then I'll do the darker areas. I'm going to leave out areas. Feel like you need to leave it out, just leave it out. This is just going to help me get my proportions. Help me to see if everything that I've done so far is going to work out. And I'm adjusting as I go. I'm not stuck with my initial drawing. She has kind of a Byzantine kind of look to her. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but um, you see it a lot in Christmas cards and things like that because it's the old old Christian kind of a feel to it, which is kind of neat. Hopefully you remember some of those things that we talked about as far as proportioning goes. Remember the corners of the mouth are about straight down from the middle of the eye. The nose is only as wide as the corners, the inside corners of the eye. Little things like that. If you remember those, it's going to make your drawing of a human head a lot easier. Even the flowers, I can get those flowers in there. Just the lightest areas of the flowers. Remember to leave some of your board showing through. So we're not going to cover the entire surface. Whenever you draw on a grounded board, <clears throat> that, that color, that grounding, unifies your piece. And so you want to leave some of it out in your foreground, in your background. Just the lightest areas. And hopefully in the back of your mind, you're thinking to yourself, color's not important. Got to get the values correct. That's what's important. I wonder if that little hat's comfortable.
one thing this way of drawing does too is it makes a little point so i've got i've got this little edge create i'm going to just turn it to the other side keep going until i can get a point and then i can go in and really tighten up some things like little shines in the eyes and things like that if i want to sometimes it's kind of nice to have it kind of soft and not as tight you're the artist you get to do what you want to <clears throat> but this soft velvet board is a, just a pleasure to draw on I didn't even notice her braids you guys <laughs> notice her braids they come down there's a braid that comes down here and then there's one that kind of wraps around over here somewhere it's nice when you don't have to worry about outlines you just do the lights, let everything else take care of itself. You may want to use a little bit of black in there, uh, just a little bit. I probably would recommend doing some other color on top of the black here's here's my black i'm just going to get some of the darkest areas with the black knowing that if i go fairly light that color whatever is on my board is going to show through now if you've got a dark board already this black is done for you <clears throat> and if you're doing it that chiaroscuro kind of a thing you just uh you just keep adding your colors I'm not sure there's any place else that really need it as far as black goes. Maybe I'll put just a little bit around her hair. So I'm going to do a little bit of contrast here. I've got my my white. And I might just put in just, just my highlights. So like right up in here, there's a little light up in there. This is what's really going to make it pop. It's a little bit of 
white up in there just on the lightest absolute lightest spots and hopefully it's going to mix a little bit with that orangey that's underneath You can soften it by, you can scumble it with your fingers if you want. But once you've got your proportions and you're pretty confident that everything is kind of where it needs to go, you start being a little more bold with your, your colors, with your values. So this is purple. I'm just going to take some purple in there. Put a little bit in the inner cheek over here. Now, because the purple and the yellow kind of, of the board kind of mixed together, it's going to tone that purple down a little bit. It's going to look a little redder. And I always get asked, how do you know what colors to use? I don't. I just kind of feel it and say, oh, okay, this is this feels right. <clears throat> and you do a little experimenting at the first, too. kind of concentrate on the face because I feel like that's the most important spot. Kind of a chocolatey brown if that would go under that shadow of her nose some red would do it nicely in there to kind of keep that coming out <clears throat> there's a kind of an orangey red it's called vermilion that might be a nice color to use up in there, too. Just here and there. But whatever color you, you kind of feel, you kind of look at it and go, huh, that feels right. little pink on the lip this is blue it's just that dark Prussian blue I'm gonna try a little green in there Once you get the face so it's fairly well done, everything else you can just kind of throw in. There's a very good artist named John Singer Sargent who uh, I love to look at his things because his hands and his faces were just immaculate. And then everything else is kind of thrown in. But, oh, it was done so nicely.
That rose color too is kind of nice. You can use that a lot of that in your cheek. It's kind of a peachy pinky rose color. That's nice too. Not sure what color her eyes are. I'm just going to leave them the color of my board. I'm just going to add a little bit of light. This is um kind of a pale brown color. I'm just going to add a little bit to the bottom edge of her eye. Just just enough. A little light in there. So I just layered a little bit of that rose into it, and then you can take your, your finger and kind of scumble it a little bit. Soften it. They have a little scumbling tool that you could use. I wonder if cotton swabs would work. I've always used my fingers. Kind of helps you get into your artwork, I guess. I'm going to try a little bit of green in here just to see what happens. Because I know red and green make brown. So I just want a kind of a darker edge there without having to be black. Let's try that. That seemed to work out okay. Red and green worked out okay. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of blue to this eye, to the white part of the eye. Usually your shadows are, are slightly blue in any of your light parts. <clears throat> and while I have that, I'm going to do a lot of the fabric and everything with this light blue as well. So I'm just going to kind of go in, just hit some of those little um, folds this light blue and anything else that I think I should get. Getting a little bolder with my my stuff because I know the face is done. Everything else just will fall into place.
a lot of purple in this uh, these red flowers up here too, <clears throat> especially up up in these upper ones. I'm gonna start with purple and then do the red on top of it. Well, that's a coin. She got a little coin around her neck. That's what that is. I'm trying to figure that out. What is that? Big coin. Where we don't have a whole lot of time left. I want to just start throwing in color. The face is done. Hands are secondary to the face. We could work on those a little bit more. But as we run out of time, you've got to throw in as much information as you can. As quickly as you can. Any of, any of the time I, I think I'm going to do something dark, I usually reach for indigo blue before I reach for black. Just, just because indigo blue is going to be a better, better color. We don't have a ton of time left. Start adding some colors like crazy. Wherever you feel like they need to go. Kind of reminds you of drawing in grade school crayons, huh? But what you can do with oil pastels is much better than crayons. Last thing you want to do is sign it. Hopefully you had a fun experience today and learned something maybe and even tried something that you've never done before. And hopefully somewhere along the way it's made your life a little bit better because art makes life better. And keep doing art.